Sorry, we had a technology fail in the first video. We're gonna be live right now. and welcome back to For Your Joy. This is a daily Facebook Live show where we consider one biblical text, four biblical questions, and I pray that it would be for your joy. Now, if you're blessed by the show and you want to help us get the message of the gospel out there to as many people as we can, it's really easy to do that. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe to this uh, channel on YouTube, share this video on Facebook, or even tag friends in the comments section below but our only point in doing this during this pandemic is just to counteract all of the negativity on the internet and to inundate the world with the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So if you want to help us do that, it's simple, it's easy, and you can do that now. Now, today we're going to be going uh, through, continuing through our study of the two greatest commandments by attempting to understand what Jesus meant when he taught us to love God with all of our soul. Yesterday, we examined what it meant for us to actually love God with all of our hearts, which is our emotions, our passions, our convictions, and our commitments. But today, we're going to be looking at what does it mean to love God with all of our soul. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer here. The word soul in the Bible is suche, and it is a complicated word, to say the least. And before we can understand what Jesus means by this word in Matthew 22, love God with all of your soul, we really need to do a little bit of deconstruction. You see, when we think about the word soul, we think about something that's entirely immaterial, something that's completely spiritual, something that lives within the essence of us, but we can't smell it, taste it, touch it, weigh it, or, or empirically verify it. We think it's something that is there, it's real, it's something that all of us have because we've been made in the image of God, but it's not something that we can touch or hold. It's immaterial. That's the way that we think about it. And either someone is going to be redeemed by Jesus and their soul is going to go to heaven, whatever that means, or their soul is going to be damned in hell because of their sin, whatever that completely means. And there's this kind of mystery around what it means to have a soul. Now, the Bible does actually cover some of those aspects, but I would say that we need to widen our perspective on what the Bible is actually saying, because it soul does not just mean the immaterial life, it just, in a, a synonym for it, could actually be life. And we could spend, I, I'll tell you, we could spend hours and hours and hours of hours of our time here trying to figure out exactly the totality of what this word means, but the word life is a good synonym. It can mean that immaterial life that you can't see, taste, smell, or touch. And it can also mean your practical, physical life that you live in and interact with every day. <clears throat> for instance, Jesus uses the word for soul, suche, in Matthew 6. The same word that is translated soul in Matthew 22 in Matthew 6 is used and is translated as life. Let's look at what Jesus says. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life. That is the same word, suche, for soul. The English translators in this passage decided that this word should be translated as life in this passage instead of as soul like it is in Matthew 22. So, for this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will wear. Is not life, same word, soul, is not your life, is not your soul, more than food and more than clothing. So Jesus here is using this word for soul, but he's, he's not describing the immaterial life. He's describing the material life. He's describing the things that we do and the things that we need in our day in and day out regular living. Things like food and drink and clothing. 
So from this verse and, and many other verses like it, we can see that the soul is life. It's the immaterial life, but it's also the material life. It's the practical life. And to love God with all of that is to have God invade every single square inch of our life. That's what it means to love him with all of our soul. It means to bring him into fully into our mornings and to love him wholly and fully in our relationships. It, it honestly, it means to love him fully in the way that we eat food, in the way that we drink drink, in the way that our bodies interact with other bodies, in the way that we speak, in the way that we sleep, in the way that we care for our physicality, in the clothing that we wear. It really, it invades all of these areas. Loving God, as we saw yesterday, definitely means loving him with all of our hearts and our motivations and passions and internal convictions, for sure. But it's so much more than that. It, it means to love him in every aspect of our daily lives. This means, now we ask the question, what does this teach us about God? That's our first question. Well, it teaches us that God designed us to involve him in every aspect of our lives. We are not independent creatures. We are created to be com completely and totally dependent on God. He is supposed to invade every area of our lives. If you could take an inventory of every single activity that you have done, could do, would do, should do, or even might do, Every physical activity that you could list out on a sheet of paper, that is an activity that you were called and made to love God in full in. But <clears throat> let's just ask the question, that's who God is, right? Who are we? Well, we're definitely not that. We're people who do not love God with every aspect of our life. There's plenty of things that you and I either intentionally or unintentionally, wall God out of and do not include him in. We don't love God with all of our souls in the way that we eat food. I mean, I'll just confess, in my life, I have not had a great relationship with food over the course of my life. Some of that's metabolism, some of that's uh, whatever else. But, you know, I think all of us could say that we have not eaten food in such a way that totally and fully gives glory to God. We have not slept and taken care of our bodies in a way that totally and fully honors the Lord. I mean, how many all-nighters have each of us had to pull in college? Or how many times have we had to stay up late to finish work? And in that, we have, we have been unloving to the God who made our bodies and designed them to get sleep in the way that we have mistreated our bodies. Well, think about the, the way that we watch television or in the in the words that we say to other people in the way that we cut them down or in the in the in the way that we spend money i mean how often do we actually consider whether we are honoring the lord in the way that we spend our resources the money that he has given us to steward the money that he has given us to to take care of our families and to advance his kingdom and yet in the ways that we spend money we don't love god fully Often, we don't even include him in the decisions of our checkbook. You see, we wall off these compartments in our life, and we sincerely believe that, you know, God doesn't care about those things. He, he cares about the sacred things. He cares about things like whether we go to church, or whether we read our Bibles, or whether we pray, or fast, or, or do things like that. God doesn't really care about how I spend my money, or, or how I eat, or sleep, or drink. God doesn't care about the type of movies that I watch that promote frequent sex and infidelity and murder and mayhem. And, and we watch these morally depraved people doing morally depraved things. And that's not just rated R movies. Those things are happening in G-rated and PG-rated movies as well. And, and yet we call all of that entertainment. I remember hearing John Piper one time talk about the show Friends, which you and I would think is a pretty tame show. And he says, we laugh at that show. But when we do, we laugh at the things that God hates. The the low level of, of sexuality that the characters have is morally reprehensible to our God, and yet we call that entertainment. We're not loving God with all of our soul when we do that. And 
It's all of us, right? None of us are perfect in this area. Since all of our lives belong to God, all of our lives should be in submission to God, but they're not. We're in sin. We're in rebellion against God in so many different ways. Whether it's excessive eating, excessive drinking, excessive spending, excessive slothfulness, excessive entertainment, all of us are breaking God's law. All of us are not loving him with all of our heart and soul, and that leads us to our need for the gospel. We found out who is God. We understand who we are, lawbreakers. Who is Christ? Well, Christ is not only the one who came to bring God back into our hearts, but to also bring God back into our daily lives, to forgive us of our sins, not just spiritual sins, not just our lack of going to church or a lack of reading our Bible or a lack of trusting in God or a lack of passion for God. Yes, he died for all those things too, but he also died to redeem our bodies. He also died to, so that we would understand how to clothe our, our bodies. Like, this is not, maybe not a problem for men, but and this is a touchy subject, so I want to say it with grace and humility. But the way that many women are clothing their bodies today, leading many people into sin, is not an expression of the love of God. Decorating our bodies in holiness and godliness is, is, is a way that we can love God with, with our bodies. But advertising our bodies as a way of, of freedom... And then saying that, well, it's not my fault that someone else is tempted, is not loving God with all of our soul. And I know that that's exclusively uh, something that applies mostly to females, but there's ways that males, there's ways that females, there's ways that every single person violates these commands. When we value work over our families, or when we value play over serious devotion, the ways that we interact with others, or the, or the ways that we do all of these things, we are falling short of God's glorious standard. We're exiling God out of our daily lives, and we need forgiveness for that. We need to turn to Jesus Christ and accept his forgiveness because we have fallen short of the glorious standard of God, and praise God that Jesus Christ has done that. On the cross, he forgave us of every sin, both spiritual and physical. And the good news of the gospel is, is that he gave us his spirit to bring us back into full relationship with God. And that is our fourth question. What does the spirit of God want to do with this truth if you're a Christian? Well, the spirit of God dwells within you. And he not only wants to sanctify your spiritual life, but he also wants to sanctify your physical life. He wants all of you to be in relationship with him, not just the parts that we often think about. He wants all of your life to be in love with God. It's kind of like what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. We're going to end with this. Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And see, when you begin submitting your life to the Spirit of God in that way, and you begin resting in the finished work of Christ on the cross, and you begin living the way that God originally designed you to live instead of living isolated from him or, or compartmentalized in your sin, when you begin allowing the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to inform this area of your life, it will be for your joy. Now listen, we may have to give up a lot of things, but we actually give up nothing that Jesus will not fill with a thousand times more pleasure from knowing him. And when we do that, it will be for our joy. So with that, that is what it means for us to love God with all of our soul. In a nutshell, there's more we could say. There's probably less that we could say, but that is what we have said. And I hope I get to see you tomorrow. But until then, you are loved. God bless.